Hello friends this is Manoj Bhaptani I welcome you all on behalf of the Edupedia world It's an amazing day today and I'm sure you guys are having a great time and by now you have already revised all those topics which have already been covered in our last video presentations Well currently we are going through the topics of bond valuation and by now we have completed bonds types of bonds difference between a bond and a debenture valuation of a debt security relationship between coupon rate price of the bond and yield premium and discount in bond pricing nominal yield current yield and yield to maturity zero coupon bonds deep discount bonds perpetuity bonds and callable bonds convertible bonds reissue of bonds bonds trading in the national stock exchange market and malkiel's theorem floating rate bonds risks which are associated with the bonds and risks which are affected by the government policies before starting with the topics which are going to be presented in this presentation i would like to throw some light on your question number 1 which is going to appear in the examination so guys it's been quoted time and again the relevance of the first question which is being done by your hand in the examination is of immense importance and it has been quoted like time and again that the one first question whichever you aspire to do like it it can be a practical one or it can be a theoretical one as well you just need to give 100% to that particular question number 1 because that is going to mark your impression in the minds of invigilator for that matter and examiner as well so you'll have to take care like cautious steps over there just to ensure that you complete that first question it with proper conceptual clarity and proper presentation in the examination hall so it is usually recommended whenever the picture comes of a practical examination like accountancy costing or say financial management you can start out with your paper with a theoretical question as well because theory in direct uh, these kind of uh, ca final level examination is used to be like direct to the point you'll have to quote your points directly on the paper and if a question is for like 4 to 5 marks you just simply jot down 4 to 5 direct points relating to that concept and you'll be able to score all the like full complete marks for that So a 16 mark question, which is usually the seventh question, if you'll be starting out your paper with the seventh question first, you'll be exactly hitting the bullseye with that kind of performance that you can achieve 16 out of 16 marks for that. So guys, that is an essential tip. Always start out your paper with that one question in which you are 100% confident to score the complete marks. That is going to help you out and create a good impact on the paper checker while. assessing the examination now we'll start out this video presentation with today's first topic and that is duration of bond the term duration is nothing but weighted discounted payback period of a bond where cash inflows from the bonds are coupons and maturity values guys we have already learned in capital bursting during our ca ipcc level a term called payback period which simply tells us when in years we would receive our initial investment in a project back through projects inflows this ignores the time value of money payback period is a kind of derivation which actually ignores the time value of money to improve upon this we have also learned about discounted payback period which recognizes the time value of cash flows the money where we simply take the present values of each cash flow and using cumulative values we calculate the discounted payback period obviously we would be a higher number in years this would be a higher number of years now when we assign the weights to these projected cash flows that is like multiplying each present value of cash inflows with weights like weight 1 for the first year of cash inflow weight 2 for the second year of cash inflow and so on and then proceed to the calculation of payback period we will be calculating the weighted discounted payback period 
by assigning weights we are giving the immense importance to the earlier cash flows and hence when we receive a very large cash flow in year 1 it will be multiplied it by a lower weight let's say for one for first year and hence the payback period would be lower and vice versa the term duration is nothing but the weighted discounted payback period in case of a bond where the cash inflows from bonds are coupons and maturity values in the above example we can see that uh, the denominator is nothing but the price of a bond which is currently and thus the numerator is a measurement on how in years it takes for a price of a bond to be repaid by its internal cash flows since a zero coupon bond doesn't play doesn't pay any immediate cash flows during the complete life cycle the entire money is available only on maturity so that is the case duration of a zero coupon bond is equivalent to its maturity period this can be easily verified in any kind of bond which is available in the market which pertains to zero coupon bond on the same lines since the coupon bonds pay as the regular coupons we get our price much earlier to the maturity period therefore the duration of a coupon bond will always be less than its maturity period consider a coupon bond that pays coupons annually and matures in 5 years its cash flows consist of five annual coupon payments and the last payment which includes the face value as well as the coupon payment so guys duration was basically a concept formulated by mcquilly it gets its name as mcquilly duration so i'll just reiterate you back to the topic and that duration is a measurement on how in years it takes for a price of a bond to be repaid by its internal cash flows duration of a zero coupon bond is equivalent to its maturity period and that is the formula for duration here t stands for the time period in terms of weighted equivalent to respective years c stands for the coupon cash flows which are receivable every year n stands for the number of cash flows in terms of maturity period and here r is basically the required yield which is likely to be whole divided by the bond price so guys duration basically accounts for the entire pattern both size and timing of the bonds cash flows over its life it tells investors the economic lifetime of a bond whereas time to maturity focuses only on the return of principal at the maturity date so now let's move on to another topic relating to this duration only and it talks about steps of calculating a duration so firstly we'll have to determine the bond's cash flows till maturity the second step comes with determining the present value factor using yield to maturity the third comes into the picture multiplication of that present value factor with cash flows to find out the present value of the cash flows add the present value of all those cash flows to determine the market value of the bond multiply each present value of the cash flow by the corresponding figures with years that is as explained by me in my last topic year 1 by figure 1 year 2 figure by 2 and finally you will be able to get the final sum for all the final values divide this total by the market value of the bond price whole that's the last formula which i just shared out with you it's an easy steps to find out the calculation of duration keep these steps handy with you you will be able to solve any kind of problem easily for that matter let's discuss with an example consider a bond with a face value of inr 1000 with a 10% annual coupon trading at a yield of 10% find the duration of this particular bond you'll get to know in period 1 you'll be able to get a coupon of 100 however the present value factor at 10% you'll be able to know that the present value of that cash flow which you will be receiving after a year of 100 in today's present value time it's 90.91 same goes with like into the time period that is 1 you'll get the present value of the cash flow that is the fifth figure 90.9091 in period 2 you'll be getting the coupon rate at uh, 100 rupees only 
but the present value factor of that today would be 82.64 that would be multiplied by 2 you will get the figure 165.2893 same goes with year 3 4 and 5 as well in the fifth year you will be getting the maturity as well as the coupon payment so that would constitute to amount 683.01 that will be multiplied by figure 5 you will get 3415 this particular total amount of 4169.8654 you'll have to divide it by 1000 that is the INR face value of the bond today and you'll get the duration that is 4.17 years it can be easily said that whatever you are investing today you will be able to extract the particular bond price after a duration of 4.17 years you'll be able to extract entire money for that matter so guys that was the topic duration i'm sure you guys got the complete clarity with the topic now let's move on to another topic of ours today that is duration of a bond portfolio in my last slide i shared with you how to compute and calculate the duration of a single bond now if in case we need to derive out and calculate the duration of a bond portfolio how will we do that it's simple consider that we have a portfolio of bonds then the duration is nothing but the weighted average of the duration of an individual security where the weights represented the proportion invested in each security it would simply be weighted weight to one security into the direct duration of that particular portfolio plus the weight for another security into the duration of that uh, security so it would be simple enough let's take an example for that as well if 60 percent of the amount is invested in a security whose duration is four years and 40 percent of the amount is invested in a security whose duration is six years then in such a case the duration of the portfolio will be 0 0.6 into 4 plus 0 0.4 into 6 that comes 4.8 years so in such a case the entire duration would be neither four years nor six years it will be a cumulative at taking up the advantage of both the securities and their diversified portfolios the total duration period will be 4.8 years so guys that was about duration of bond portfolio now let's jump and hop on to another topic of ours today and that is the factors that actually affect the duration what are those factors that in each and every uh, bond cycle affect their duration whether they are zero coupon bonds or they are coupon bonds what are those factors so we'll start understanding them one by one first and the four most important one is paid to coupons a coupon received in a bond reduces its duration as some cash flows are received prior to maturity duration decreases with increase in coupon rates this is because we would be getting comparatively higher cash flows and also our reinvestment income increases. The next comes into picture maturity. Duration is always less than maturity except in case of zero coupon bonds. I have already shared with you that in case of zero coupon bonds you won't be able to get any kind of coupons during the entire life cycle of the bond and the entire amount will be paid only at the time of maturity. So in that case the duration will be equal to maturity period however if in case coupons are provided in the bond definitely you will be able to extract out your income much before maturity date since we would be getting our cash flows from dividend and reinvestment income ahead of maturity as well secondly as the maturity increases the due date of receipt of face value is pushed beyond and hence duration too increases throughout the life cycle of the bond the duration is continuously decreasing as the time to the bond maturity decreases. Last comes into the picture yield that is yield to maturity. Duration is inversely proportional to yield. This is because as yield increases we would be reinvesting our coupons at a slightly higher rate. Thereby we would be able to receive our initial investment earlier than its scheduled time. Hence duration increases on the same lines as yield falls the duration decreases duration decreases not increases in such a case right so when yield falls duration increases 
So now let's come to the summary concept crux for these factors which are affecting duration. We'll get to know that the duration of a zero coupon bond is equivalent to maturity. A bond's duration is higher when the coupon rate is lower. A bond's duration increases with time to maturity. The duration of a coupon bond is higher when yield to maturity is lower. The investor should choose bonds with the longest duration because duration is positively related to maturity and negatively related to coupon. So guys, that was all about the topic of duration. I got, I guess you got the entire conceptual clarity pertaining to this particular topic of duration, whether it's about single security or it's about bond portfolios. We'll be taking up the practical questions of this at the last segment of finalizing of this particular chapter bond valuation. This is the time to provide you some dose of motivation just to make you inspired and motivated all the time. It says you are only confined by the walls you built for yourself. Guys, it is only we who decide our future and certainly you should not make, make any kind of walls for yourself. Try making out bridges for yourself just to get clear out nearer to the success. I have seen many people in my life who say that we are not able to fulfill this thing, that thing, that thing, this thing. But somehow, it is only they who is like procrastinating each and every activity of theirs. It's better and right time and high time actually to take out the step just to ensure that you by the time clear up your CA final, you make any kind of history for yourself. Just to ensure that fact, stay connected and keep uh, going for that matter. Take regular actions, keep revising your topics because revision is one of the most, most, most essential thing to crack CA final. CA final being a very vast uh, a level at its own, you need to ensure that you keep revising your topics time and again. And that was my dose of motivation. Thank you so much guys. It would be lovely if you just keep interacting with your queries, your questions in the comment boxes. Stay connected and that is going to help us understand your needs very much better. Interaction is an essential part of any communication. Thank you so much on behalf of the Edupedia world. Have a nice day guys. Bye. Take care.